Over the years, I've had the chance to track, trail, and observe just about every animal in North America. While on this journey, I've tracked my way from West Africa to Eastern Australia. Tracking is, of course, an ancient skill. Whether used for hunting or the avoiding of predators, for many of our ancient, and in some cases, not so ancient ancestors, tracking was a part of everyday survival. Of course, my own Abenaki ancestors were not only known for their tracking of animals, but in some cases, the tracking of their enemies. From early conflicts with neighboring native tribes to the various colonial wars, Abenaki trackers were not only respected, but at times quite feared. Growing up in the foothills of the Adirondacks, my first exposure to such histories came through stories shared by my father, Joseph Bruchak. As a Native American author and storyteller, my dad shared many stories of my Abenaki ancestors as well as those of neighboring Native nations. Hearing such stories, especially those about animals, uh, made me long for the time when I could go in the woods and have my own animal-related adventures. Luckily for my brother Jesse and I, we had a large track of woods in our backyard. When accompanied by my father, he would of course uh, show us the many stories the forest had to offer. Whether it be learning about the various plants or trees or finding animal signs, there was always plenty to learn. Another early source of learning came from my grandfather, Joe Jr. Not only a noted hunter and experienced outdoorsman, he was a member of the Taxidermist Hall of Fame. With his Adirondack Taxidermy Studio being located just up the road, as kids, it was a place of wonder. Visiting his studio, we not only heard of his many hunting adventures, but got an up-close look at some pretty amazing animals. In fact, many of my early animal identification skills came from the hundreds of hours I spent at my grandfather's studio. In my teenage years, my dad introduced me to John Stokes, founder of The Tracking Project. Having at that time just returned from spending several years training with the Aborigines of Australia, John had plenty to share. During a weekend skills training with John in Anchiota, New York, John not only shared some new skills, but added to ones I had already learned from my father. For a tracker, the use of all your senses is key. Not just your eyes, but your ears, sense of smell, taste, touch, and beyond. Truly becoming a part of your environment. Such skills not only helping you find the next track, but if need be, the actual animal who made them. Following my introduction to John, I ended up spending several summers as an assistant instructor at his Hawkeye training program in New Mexico. During this program, focusing on the teaching of tracking and survival skills to teenage boys, I began to hone my own skills as a tracking instructor. In the early 1990s, I started to teach tracking to people of all ages, including offering classes at the Indakina Education Center, which is on my family land. As any teacher will do, I from time to time referred to books to help expand my knowledge of what I was teaching. When doing so, I made an interesting discovery. There were a lot of mistakes in some pretty popular books on animal tracking. These mistakes included too many toes on some animals, not enough on others, and even more errors concerning animal gaits. Few tracking books seemed to explain, much less showed, many of the things I was finding in the woods. As a teacher who wanted to pass on the best information to his students, these inaccuracies would not do. Luckily, in 1995, while teaching in Estes Park, Colorado, I met acclaimed tracker and naturalist, Dr. James Halfpenny. Following one of his lectures, I approached Dr. Halfpenny to ask him about some of the problems I was having finding accurate information on gates. Immediately, Jim got down on the ground to demonstrate with exacting detail every single gate I had a question about. During that week, Jim and I sparked up a friendship that resulted in the first of many trips to track with Jim in his backyard, Yellowstone National Park. Those trips gave me a chance to track and observe many of the animals I had only dreamed about as a child. Along with having many animal-related adventures, I learned the ins and outs of the modern science of tracking. The practical applications of Dr. Halfpenny's cutting edge techniques greatly improved my overall knowledge as a tracker. Along the way, it also improved my abilities as a teacher with students who ranged from kindergartners to wildlife officials. Along with running classes together for over a decade, Dr. Halfpenny and I have co-authored three books on tracking. Nowadays, there's hardly a week that goes by that I'm not teaching tracking in some form or another. 
whether it's with the many youth and adult level programs run through Indakinai Education Center or through my travels, people of all ages are eager to learn this ancient art. Even as a storyteller, I usually bring along plaster casts of various tracks. When teaching tracking, footprint identification is a fundamental skill. Each track contains dozens of clues. Although a single track can sometimes be enough to identify a particular species, a series of tracks can truly tell the story. This is especially true in such substrates as snow, mud, and sand. By understanding gates and taking proper measurements, you can judge the size of the animal as well as the speed and intent. Beyond tracks and trails, there are dozens and dozens of other clues. Some of these clues are specific to a single species. As a kid, I learned that even when on the best trail, it's better not to keep your eyes locked on the ground, constantly reminding yourself to both vary your vision as well as your senses. To be a good tracker, you also have to be a good naturalist. Understanding the animals you are tracking is key. The way they move, their habitat, food, and the sounds and smells associated with the animal are key to solving the mystery. For many modern trackers, finding a good scat or any other place you could acquire a hair from a particular animal can be the ultimate goal. In fact, when trying to identify rare or endangered animals, a DNA producing hair sample can be the next best thing to finding the actual animal. Also adding to the modern tracker's arsenal is the advancement of technology. From infrared cameras and spotting scopes to many uses of GPS, we have a leg up on our ancestors. As I often remind my students, however, technology is only as good as a tracker who uses it. Time-tested skills are at the core of all good trackers. While you hone your skills, there are always new stories to find. Over the years, I've been asked questions about creatures of all shapes and sizes, including some that are at times controversial. Are there cougars in the East? Do you believe in Sasquatch? As a native storyteller, creatures like Sasquatch I actually find quite intriguing. Similar creatures appear in many native legends from across the continent. But regardless of the question, now is in the past, many trails can be followed, and many mysteries can be solved through good tracking.